your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to tell new YouTubers a top secret hack on how to grow on the platform that nobody else is telling them. This message will self-destruct. Did somebody say boom? Please tell me that y'all are not too young to understand the Inspector Gadget reference there. And if you are, I'm officially old and that's all there is to it. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all. My name is Jessica Stansberry and I am pumped that you are here. If this is your first time, I promise you will not be disappointed here on my channel. And this is a good video to jump in on if it is your first time because I'm giving you a hack that nobody else is talking about. See, here on this channel, I have shared a lot of ways to grow. Like, you know, here's how you grow on YouTube right now. Here's how you go from zero to 1,000 subscribers today. <laughs> That's not... No, in, in like a short time, but not today, but whatever. Here's how you go from zero to 1,000 subscribers in 30 days. Here's how you get more subscribers. I've, I've done all of those videos. I have done them all. But as I've been sitting as an expert in clubhouse rooms over the last few weeks, answering questions from you guys and from other people who have questions about YouTube, I realized that there was this little secret hack that you didn't know and that I don't know that I've ever told and that a lot of people are not talking about. And so I knew immediately I had to talk about it. We're going to call this top secret strategy trend hacking. And trend hacking is probably the way that all of your favorite YouTubers have grown the most, whether they were intentional with it because you can do it on accident or whether they had planned it and knew what to do. So what happens with trend hacking is that someone else's video is trending. Someone else's video on a certain topic is trending. And maybe even multiple people's videos on a certain topic are trending. And you can create content that is very similar to that. You can make sure you get your tags right. You can make sure you release it at the right time. And it can ride the wave that those videos are creating. Now you can trend hack yourself. You can trend hack other people. It kind of works the same either way, but you also have to be really intentional with how you trend hack if you're going to trend hack other people. So let's go more in depth on this from a trend hacking yourself type of strategy. So if I'm in my analytic on just like the standard page in the last 28 days, I want to pay attention to the most popular videos in the last 28 days on my channel. And particularly I wanna pay attention if there's a new one that has popped up into this section that was not there in the last 28 days and or if there is a video that I have done in the last 28 days that is hitting this section. So generally for me, prior to this last 28 days, um, it was these, these videos here, like how to use iMovie, beginner, I'm a tutorial, how to use ClickUp, blah, 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 all of these videos that are kind of old. Those were the ones that were in my top performing videos in this period, 28 day kind of picture. Now, what has happened in the last 28 days is that not only has this how to start a blog in 2020 popped into this stat and even though it's a year old it's it's new to this section of my analytics so essentially what that means is that somewhere within the youtube algorithm this video is quote unquote popping off so when it wasn't here in the last 28 days and then it pops into here in this 28 days or this seven days or whatever time spectrum you're looking at that means that youtube is currently serving up your video so this how to start a vlog in 2020 was not in this section last month, but is there now, which means that YouTube is favoring that content and showing it to quite a few people on the platform. Now I could click into it and view all the stats and I'll show you more about that in a second, but that's the first metric. Now, more important here is that this video that I did in this 28 day period on December 22nd, and today when I'm filming this, it's just January 18th. So really close to the 28 day period anyway. This video that I did in this 28 day period is the number one top performing video 
even if it wasn't number one, even if it was number eight, I would still have the same feelings about it. That is massive. That means that a new video I have done is popping off and getting picked up in the YouTube algorithm. The first place that I start is by coming here into my last 28 days, I look in this top videos for this period section, and then I will see what videos are new to this section compared to the last 28 days, and hopefully what videos are new to this section in the last 28 days and also are fairly new to my channel. So to trend hack myself, I would go in here and say, okay, well, I know that this how to start a vlog in 2020 and this 1000 subscribers in 30 days are two videos that are taking off on my channel right now. So it would behoove me to create content similar to those, create content with a similar storyline, create content with similar strategies, create content for a similar audience, create content with a similar title, that kind of thing. I personally don't want to create any more how to get started on with a blog content because it is not driving the type of people who are going to watch the rest of the content on my channel. So I'm going to ignore this one. And I will say that that can be hard sometimes, but you also have to be really intentional with where you want your channel to grow and how you want it to look going forward. And you know, I did this video a year ago and a year ago, I probably thought, you know, oh, I'll do some type of blogging content and it will do well. And, and now it is, but now I don't want to talk about that anymore. So I'm going to look into the statistics of this video. I'm going to look at the analytics of this video. And you can see here that this video is massively quote unquote popping off. So essentially you can see here that it's gotten 44,000 views. And my YouTube analytics is literally telling me that that's 42,000 more than I would normally get in this time frame on a video. So that tells me that YouTube is like, oh my gosh, this is a great video. We're going to show it to more people and we're going to just keep showing it. And the more people who watch it, the longer those people stick around on my channel, the more YouTube is going to keep showing that to people. Okay. So we can see just from the, the front picture of the analytics of this video that it is doing really well. So when I'm looking at possibly trend hacking something, this is probably the first place I want to start. How can I do content that's similar but different? How can I talk more about getting your first 1000 subscribers or, or how to grow quickly on YouTube? How can I talk about those things so that I can throw new videos into the algorithm because they literally want to show them to the same person who's watching this video. So that is how I would trend hack myself. I first want to start with what's doing well right now for me and how can I capitalize on what is doing well for me and throw more things into YouTube. The reason this works is that YouTube is choosing to place this type of video on people's home pages, on their recommended pages, like whatever that looks like on in the YouTube world, right? And because they are clicking and watching, YouTube now is hungry for more content to feed those people. So if you are the one creating the more content to feed those people, then the YouTube algorithm is definitely going to show your content to those people because it has already vetted you. So someone else could be trying to trend hack this video of mine, someone, some other creator, and I'll show you more about that in a minute. Some other creator could be trying to trend hack this video of mine, but I will take precedence in the YouTube algorithm on who it's hopefully going to show first because it already knows that people have liked what I have put out before on this subject. And because we're trying to trend hack the same video and the video is mine, then I have, I have top billing there. But if I just let this opportunity go by and I don't put more content into the, the machine that is YouTube to let it feed it out to more people, then it will pick up other people's content who is trying to trend hack my video and throw it into the algorithm. Let me also say, because I feel like I might've made it sound this way just a second ago, but more than one person or video can trend hack a current trending video. And the reason for that is YouTube viewers are always looking for new content to watch, right? Like we're, we're never just like done. 
We're always wanting to look for new content and put new content into our playlist of things to watch in the future. And so it's not like YouTube is going to say, well, Jessica created a video and this was her video and we think that the viewers of this video would like her new video, so we're only gonna show the people who were liking the video taking off her video they're not gonna do that. They're going to say, oh, well, Jessica created a video that is similar to this video that's doing really well, so we're gonna push it along with it, but also so did this creator and this creator and this creator, and we're gonna make sure their videos show up on the same people's homepages so that we're serving up the viewer with the right kind of content that they wanna watch from different people. Now, you can ruin your attempt at trend hacking as well. So if someone likes my video on this and you create a video that's literally the same title, the same tags, a similar thumbnail, like all of the things, but the, the, the actual meat of your content is crap and people don't stick around and watch it, you might have done everything else right, but YouTube is gonna be like, well, nobody's sticking around, the retention rate on this video is junk, and we're not going to continue showing this video to the people who were liking this other video from Jessica. So to kind of round up the point on trend hacking yourself, if you see that a video is doing really well for you in the current time frame, like, Yes, one of your videos might have done well a year ago, but that's not what we're talking about. If you see a video that's picking up and doing really well for you in the current moment, then you absolutely should try and find, find another way to say it differently, to add on to it, to create content that somewhat, somehow will you know, be able to be attached to that content so that YouTube will take it and show it to the people. YouTube literally has the job of trying to pair content to the right viewer. And so they are constantly looking for new content to give viewers. And so if there's, you know, 100,000 people out there who have done nothing but watch how to grow on YouTube content in the last 28 days, then they're constantly looking for new content like that to throw at those people. So it's always a good metric to know that your content is doing well and to know that you can then piggyback off of that and let more of your content do well. Now, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna go back to my videos that I've published since that video that is taking off and the videos, the few videos before it and just kind of show you what is going on, okay? So so prior to publishing that video, my videos were getting anywhere from about a thousand views in the first week to 2,000, maybe a little bit more views in that first week. But what happened is that once these this video started taking off, once this 1,000 subscribers in 30 days video started taking off, if I am producing content after that video that plays to the interest of that same audience, YouTube is then picking it up and, and showing it to the same people who watched this video and they are making the decision to watch it based on the thumbnail and the title they, and based on the fact that it's me and they've watched me before. And if they are sticking around through the video, if it piques their interest, YouTube is then going to show it to more people. So you can see here that this video that was published December 18th, so a month ago today, right before I published the 1,000 subscribers in 30 days, only has 1,000 views to this day. And honestly, that was kind of typical for me. Um, if we scroll down here, we can see that these videos below it have more, but they've been published for well over a month. So, you know, this one has 2,300 views, but it's been published for well over a month, and this one has 2,000. Again, published for a long time. This one only has 1,800 views, and it's been published since November 13th, so two months. So, essentially, that was kind of like the, the, the pattern that my channel was following until I published this video. Now, Every video I have published since I published that 1,000 subscribers in 30 days has been very much so a video that someone who watched that would want to watch. So we have, I made a mistake. And that's me talking about how I basically have only created for the search engines and I haven't been creating as much for you and how I'm gonna change that going forward. That one has 3,700 views in two weeks. 
um, four income streams that every YouTuber needs, 4,000 views in a little over two weeks, I guess. I guess these are a little over two weeks. Um, how to get paid sponsorships, 3,300 views in two weeks, um, 4,000 views on this one, the secrets to growing on YouTube in 2021, 3,300 views on how much YouTube paid me in 2020, and that one has only been published for three days. So while 3,300 views may not look like a ton, that's a thousand views per day for that video right now. Whereas before I published this video, my videos were getting a thousand views in a month <laughs> or in a couple of weeks or whatever, not a thousand views per day. So essentially I have been purposefully trend hacking my own video to make sure that any other videos I publish are riding the wave of that video. So YouTube is like, oh, we're showing this video to people. Well, they're, if they liked her, they're gonna like this video from her and et cetera and et cetera. So eventually, will that fall off? Absolutely. But if I can continue to do my job and put the right content out into the algorithm, it will continue to pick up and pick up and pick up. Now, how do you trend hack other people? There's a few different ways. So the first thing I want you to remember is that while someone may have had a really popular video on their channel when we go look at other people's channels, while someone may have had a really popular video, you want to make sure that you're trend hacking videos that are currently popular, that are doing well right now, that are doing well within the same time period that you're going to release your video off the back of it. So if you go to someone else's channel and you're like, oh, well they had this video on Instagram do really well and I want to talk about Instagram, but it's a year ago, you're likely, that wave has probably crashed and is not, is not upward trending anymore. So if you create a video with similar tags, with a similar title, with a similar topic, you're, you're not really, there's nothing to attach it to because that one already had its time in the like peak and has probably come back down. The first place I want you to look when it comes to trend hacking other people is in your analytics. So this is a new stat, or at least I don't think it's very old. I can't remember when they added it, but if you go to audience when you're in your analytics as a whole, not on one specific video, and you scroll down right here, this little metric is going to be your best friend for trend hacking other people, okay? so. This is other videos my audience, the audience who watches my channel, have watched in the last seven days. And they are ranked in order, okay? So what happens then is this provides you with a ton of information. Number one, this provides you with other channels you may not have even known about that are similar to your channel. So I have no clue who Patty Galloway is. I have never heard of this person, but now I'm gonna go see what this person's channel is about. That's important for me to know that my viewers are also watching that video and that channel probably. So you can see here other videos your audience has watched in the last seven days. Then what I would suggest is one, make note of the channels, right? And, and I would go all the way through this and make note of all the channels that are listed here because these are likely channels that your audience is watching on a regular basis. So you can go through and kind of look through their content and see what has done well for them. So Annie, um, Vanessa, Kelly Stamps, Katherine Manning, Patty Galloway, let's see, um, I don't know who this girl is, Aaliyah, um, Gillian Perkins, Roberto Blake, all of these people are people I know I've collaborated with in the past, or not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, Katherine Manning, Think Media, Sean Cannell's channel, Sean Cannell's channel, <laughs> um, Sunny, Nick Nimmin. So you can see here just a list of channels that I need to pay attention to, a list of channels that I need to go and see kind of what is doing well for them right now. I'll show you how I do that in just a second, but I wanna stay here for just a minute. So one, channels. Let, we'll go look at these channels in a minute and see what's doing well for them. But beyond channels, obviously these five videos here are doing well for that person and my audience is interested in that subject. So it would behoove me to do something similar. So 
how much money, how much YouTube paid me in 2020 with 300,000 subscribers from Katherine Manning. I also did a video on how much YouTube paid me in 2020 with 100,000 subscribers and this is one of the reasons I did it because I saw in my analytics that people were watching multiple videos, not just Catherine's, but multiple videos at that moment of creators telling people how much they made in 2020 from YouTube. So that, and that has done well for me. That video has done really well for me. That's the one that's getting about a thousand views per day. Now here's one from Kelly Stamps, um, like her routine as a full-time YouTuber, what she actually does. Um, this Patty Galloway, basically this person is doing an analysis of another creator and how they gained 1 million subscribers in a year and their strategy. So that would be something cool for me to do. Here's Vanessa Lau. This video is how to make $10,000 per month on social media. Um, so that would be something easy I could do and, you know, trend hack her video. Um, Annie, YouTube paying creators more, YouTube monetization updates for 2021. So any of these topics here that I'm seeing in this list of other videos my audience has viewed in the last seven days is going to be good for me to do. Now, when I say good for me to do, I 1000% do not mean copy. 99.9% .9 of the time, I never even click on these videos and watch them. I just see the overarching topic. So if I see YouTube monetization 2021 has done well for Roberto Blake, and you can see here YouTube monetization updates 2021 has done well for Annie, then that might be a topic I can talk about. Now I already know what they're talking about in that. I already know what those updates are. So me doing a video does not, me, does not require me watching their videos, and for me, I personally don't ever want to be accused of copying somebody or, you know, let someone else's video influence what I want to talk about on a subject. So 99% of the time when I do this research, I don't even watch that person's video. I'm literally just seeing what the topic is, seeing how I can lend my expertise to it and my own voice. So just from this section right here, just this section, we now have a list of channels that we need to be paying attention to because our audience is also watching them. And if our audience is also watching them, then what does well on their channel has the potential to do well on ours, okay? But two, not only do I have channels to go check out, I have literal video topics that I could do my own spin on and pretty well know that it's going to do well based on the fact that my audience is going and watching it on these people's channels and YouTube wants to give people the kind of content they like to see so I can create those videos and they will watch them. So this is really interesting because I didn't even know that Think Media did this video. And that's also the other, the other part of this is a lot of times we're all in the same wavelength anyway, which is really interesting to watch but they're saying go viral, how to find and exploit trends to get massive views on YouTube. That's exactly what I'm talking about in this video. And I had no clue that Think Media had even done a video on that recently. And there's a solid chance that they are approaching this from a different angle. They may be telling you to go into the trend tab on YouTube or to use a tool like vidIQ or TubeBuddy to look at trends where I'm not talking about that all, at all. And they could also be talking about the exact same thing I am. So though, even though I had no clue they had done this video, I now know, well, I'm on the right path because hopefully if that video is doing well for them, then this one's gonna do well for me. So when you're sitting down to plan out your content, your own content would be the first place I would start what's doing well for you right now. How can you, um, you know, double down on that? But then I would also come here. This would be the second place I would go. The third thing I would do is to start with these channels that are showing up in this section of your analytics. These are people who your audience are already watching, which means that in the algorithm's head, if the algorithm was a person, they're thinking, well, if they already, if they watch Jessica and they watch Catherine Manning, then, you know, if Catherine does a video on this and Jessica does a video on this, then they're going to love both of them. 
this is not a competition. And I think that that's something that a lot of YouTube, especially new YouTubers don't understand. One, there's never an original idea. <laughs> um, you never have original ideas. And just like this, I literally did not think that anybody had been talking about this recently. And here's Think Media literally talking about the same thing. So, so my point there is like, there's no idea that's ever original. I feel like all ideas have do been done in some way, shape or form, but also there's enough room for all of us. And the reason for that is, you know, people are not, people don't just go on YouTube one time and watch content and then leave. They are constantly on the platform looking for new content that they would enjoy. And YouTube is constantly on the lookout for content that those people would enjoy. So Sean Cannell and Heather Torres from Think Media are good friends of mine. And Sunny is a good friend of mine. And Nick Nimmin and Annie. And I don't know Catherine, but I'm sure she's an amazing girl. And we would probably be friends if we knew each other. Roberto is a good friend of mine. Gillian and I have had, you know, conversations and have met in person and, you know, have collaborated together. Vanessa and I have chatted. And so we don't look at this as competition. It kind of looks... You, you want to look at it like you're all in this together and you're all kind of doing this thing together. The most successful channels, the, the channels that grow the quickest are the channels that kind of link together and go arm in arm. So an example of this, and this is one that I just recently realized that I never knew that I didn't know. <laughs> There you go. So I absolutely love Peter McKinnon. Who doesn't, right? I love Peter McKinnon and I love everything he does. And I think his channel is just massively amazing. Well, if you go and look at the people he, he regularly talks about or has in his videos, it is basically two people. Chris Howe and Maddie Hapoya. Chris Howe, Maddie Hapoya, and Peter McKinnon all talk about very similar things. They're all talking about photography and videography and they're all generally doing very similar types of videos and you know very similar like b-roll and like all of this stuff but they're also friends and so peter mentioning chris howe was how i even found chris howe's channel chris howe talking about this is how i found that peter mckinnon talking about maddie hapoya or having him in his video is how i found maddie and 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 it all works together and the algorithm sees that so if it sees that they're leaving Peter's video and going to check out Maddie, or they're leaving Maddie's video and going to check out Chris or whatever, it's going to continue to play people into that sequence. So like, oh, you liked Peter's video, you're really gonna like Maddie's video. Oh, you like Maddie's video, you're really gonna like Chris's video. And it's going to ping pong us around as viewers in what we're shown and what we're served up so that we're served up the things that YouTube knows we're going to watch. That's why brothers or sisters who create channels that are separate tend to grow together or best friends or whatever who are creating similar types of content tend to start and grow at the same rate. It's because they are doing it intentionally and then the algorithm picks up on it and is like, oh, we should totally show these people these videos because if they like this one, they're gonna like this one and it all works together. So when I'm showing you this, this is not a, go copy this person in some kind of sleazy tactic. This is an actual tactic that works and everybody who's a YouTube creator knows it. So if I know that on that, you know, people, your people watch stat, that my people are going and watching Katherine Manning's channel, then she's going to be one of the channels that I go kind of scope out for possible trending content that I can piggyback off of. Now she's not gonna be the only one. I'm also gonna go to Annie's channel and Nick Nimmons and Roberto's and um, who else was on there? Vanessa and whoever else and kind of just see if there's any types of videos that they've created recently that I can put my own spin on, do something similar, and kind of piggyback on its success in the algorithm. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do when I'm kind of scoping out someone else's channel, and by the way, and by the way, let me pause. If you are a new YouTuber and you have not yet really even gotten that statistic or you don't have, you know, you don't have a metric somewhere to say, well, my viewers are watching this thing or whatever, and you are looking to trend hack, then 
it's, it's going to be your job to find channels who create content in the way that you want to create content to the same audience and with the same subject matter in general. If I was a brand new YouTuber and I knew that I wanted to create content that was similar to Peter McKinnon's or similar to Maddie Hapoya's or similar to whatever, I would go to their channel and see what is doing well for them right now. Now, I will also say that you should keep your expectations in line with where you are. The odds of you with a channel of zero being able to trend hack Peter McKinnon's videos is pretty slim because there's other people who have a higher amount of subscribers, who have more authority within the platform, who are also trying to do that. So you want to make sure that you are trend hacking people and videos that you actually could fall into the algorithm for. So people that are just a step above you, who are in line with you, who are similar to you, but maybe not a million subscribers or 500,000 subscribers, right? Okay, so I'm on, I'm on Catherine's channel and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on this little video tab and that's gonna bring up all of her videos and currently they're in order from newest to last, okay? And that's kind of what I want to do. Now you could sort by most popular and see if any current videos are falling into this like first, you know, first like screen full. And I can see here that her getting started with affiliate marketing is one of her more recent videos that is doing well. And then also this exactly how much money I make from YouTube each each month is doing well and those were published within the last six months but that's not really i mean yes i care about that absolutely because if she published this only three months ago and it's already in the top of her channel when she has these massive views on these other videos it's worth noting but what i really want to do is stay in that date added newest to oldest category and look at their current content within the last month and maybe two months of their content. So for Catherine, there's only one, two, three, there's only 11 videos that she has published in the last two months. So I'm only looking at this one and these, okay? Um, and just to make it clean, I'll probably look at these as a whole. So when I'm looking at this top two rows for her, what has done the best for her in the last two months? And so we can see, okay, so she had this one that's done 21,000 views. This one did 27, this one did 20. So that those are all kind of the same. And then we have her, this one that has 50,000 views, which is double what all of these have. And you know, quite a bit more than this one with 35,000 views, quite a bit more than this one, this one, this one, this one. And then this one does really well. So essentially, if I'm looking at her, channel, if I'm looking at someone else's channel, then I want to go to their channel and I want to say, okay, of their recent content, what looks to be like their average as far as how many views they get on each video. And then what of those recent videos is standing out above that average. So in this one, it's going to be my exact YouTube strategy for coming up with video ideas that will get you views and grow your channel. That's done well for her. Okay. In addition to that, she's got this one that's how much YouTube paid me in 2020 with 300,000 subscribers that's got almost 50,000 views and only in the last five days. So if I were sitting here planning content for the next week, I could say, hmm, maybe I should talk about how much YouTube paid me in the last year. That seems to be doing well. Or I might talk about, you know, exactly how to plan out YouTube videos. So I can write those down and I can say, okay, those are two topics that I should talk about. If people, who are watching my channel are also watching Annie's channel, then I can go to Annie's channel and I can do the same thing. I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that this is how all YouTubers who have had a video take off and go really well, who actually planned for that to happen. Because again, we can stumble into it on accident, but all of them who have actually planned for that to happen have done this exact strategy go see what channels similar to mine are doing and go see what is working well for them and do my own spin and my own take on that to capitalize on the wave that is currently peaking for that person so that I am that next piece of content that comes out to those viewers. 
there's a science behind YouTube. It is not a mystery. And yes, sometimes it feels that way. And, and even at 100,000 subscribers and four years into this journey, I still feel like sometimes it's a bit of a mystery. But it really is algorithmic and scientific and it is something that you can intentionally capitalize on, especially when the algorithm plays in your favor or a creator that is similar to yours favor and starts, you know, showing their video to more viewers, you can say, well, if they're going to show their video, then I know they're going to show mine and I need to create X, Y, or Z video. I hope this was massively helpful. I hope this was something you haven't heard before. I hope that this is something that you are going to take and run with right now. As you are planning out your content, plan out content strategically. It shouldn't just be throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like if you know you're in this niche, this is how you should be planning your content. If you know you're in this niche, this is also how you should be planning your content. Go to creators who are already doing something similar to you and see what's working for them because those things are gonna work for you too. Now, I'm not saying you always have to be looking out for new trends or you always have to be trend hacking. You can absolutely do your own spin and, and do things that are just for fun. So don't let me like influence you there either. You should definitely be doing things that you enjoy, whether or not they're going to take off or not. But if you're looking to grow and you're looking to grow quickly and you're looking to grow in a way that is organic and creates an audience full of people who want to come back for you because they love you, this is a really great way to do that. Because I know for me as a user of the platform, like as a viewer of YouTube, I will find someone's channel and I will binge it and I will watch all the things that they put on that channel and then I'm done. And if YouTube would just serve me up another person that's similar to them, I would be happy and I would be loyal to both of them. So that's how the viewer is reacting and acting behind the scenes. So if you can kind of play on that, oh, it'll be your best friend. I know that was a long one and I'm sorry, but hopefully it was helpful. And I would absolutely love it if you would come hang out in the comments with me. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if there was anything I breezed over that didn't quite make sense to you or if you just have questions or if you just wanna be like, oh my gosh, girl, nobody's ever told me this before, thank you. I'm hanging out in the comments for the first 30 minutes after this video goes live. And until next time, bye y'all.